That is a taste of music from the brand new album by Leah Michelle. That record is called Places. Although, do, do they call her record? What do they call these things? <laughs> I'm not really sure. I'm an old queen. I call them what I want. I'm Larry Flick, and this is One on One on Entertainment Weekly Radio, and the lovely Leah Michelle. Hi. Joining us today. So good to see you again. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure. It's an absolute <laughs> pleasure. Um, I love this record. Thank you. And I am very excited about... Your collaborators, I like the direction Mm -hmm. as just a fan of great songs and great singing. Thank you. It feels natural. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted people to say when they listened to the album. So what what was your intention when you started making the record? How do you begin yeah. a record, you yourself? Well, for me, I, I learned so much from the process of recording my first album, Louder, which I released in 2014. Right. And I was recording and releasing that album in the midst of Glee, which would bring me into the recording studio and uh, I would have to do up to 10 songs per week just for that. And then I would go on the weekend and record my album. So to not only have the vocal rest but really the mental space of figuring out who I wanted to be outside of Glee it was quite difficult and then when it came to the whole promotion side of releasing the album I really didn't have time to give it to the world in the way that I would have liked to yeah so I was that was the first educating experience in creating this new record was that I knew I wanted to make it at a time when I could really focus on it both vocally and that I could distribute it to the world with all of my attention Uh, I've been working on the record now for uh, three years well it's done so I worked on the record for over three years and uh, right before we started I sat down with my label and they were like okay if you're gonna make a second record you have to know what the sound is who do you want to be right and i i I went home and i really thought about it and you know i'm someone that really prides myself on the fact that i try to stay true to myself but i think that there is a level from the first record where i wasn't as true to myself so i sat back and i said that this album is just going to be about me it's going to sound like me it's going to represent me if it's more theatrical than people may be here on the radio every day that's fine but i wanted a vocal record that was consistent uh that was a full body of work and that really like i said represented the women i grew up listening to like barbara streisand and celine dion and where i come from broadway new york and theater Uh, i i only sat in the studio with two women for every single song amanda Behrman and ali temposi uh and i wanted that to create a level of consistency not working with a bunch of different producers so that my vocals all sounded the same um i had my hand in a lot of the songwriting process i was very selective when songs came in so this is my heart and soul as i give you a 20 minute speech just on your first question that's good i'm sure you're regretting this interview already (laughs) not even close leah no not even close but you know because uh, you know first records are tricky because for for a band it's it's anywhere from five to ten years of preamble and then you just blow it all out on those first songs Mm -hmm. or you have a situation like yours where You've been in the public eye, and there is a level of of um, expectation from every single angle of the room, whether it mm-hmm. be the people in your inner circle, the people at your your business companies, whether it be the fans who are who are interested in who you are, just as a famous person or as an actor or whatever, and that can be debilitating from my point of view as an observer. I see so many people come out with that first record and they're and they're so preoccupied with numbers that they forget to make a record mm-hmm. and here's the thing i liked louder a lot thank you and i have a really close connection to that record that i'll tell you about later but i also felt like you were when we met the first time that you were stressed out. <laughs> if I'm being, I'm, I'm a very real, tell you the truth kind of person. <laughs> I felt like you were stressed out because, because I didn't. I had a feeling that you didn't enjoy 
promoting that record? Well, I mean, I was given one week off of filming 22 episodes of the one of the most difficult television shows in history to create. And it was the final season. And it, well, Wasn't I know it? it was the season before the okay. final season. Okay, no sense of time. You know, it was obviously also during a very personal time for me. Right. So then, you know, here I am just wanting to promote a record and talk about something that I'm so passionate about, but also kind of like still needing to protect my life and my privacy. So it was always sort of this fine line for me of wanting to talk about the album and wanting to talk about the songs, but then also coming right out of a time where I was so exposed yeah. and also really feeling this need to protect myself. Um, I always wear a lot of different hats and I'm okay with that, but at that time in particular, I had a book, I had Glee, and I had an album and personal stuff. Yeah. And I give myself a ton of credit. I did it. But I learned from it, and I took everything that I learned from that experience, and I attributed, it to, I, I contributed it to this experience where I did not want to be, you know, filming at the same time. I did not want to release any other books or any other projects at the same time, and I also wanted to write songs that I knew I could completely talk about openly. Uh, that was something I learned from the first experience. I wrote these songs and I put these songs on the album, and then I was like. Oh my God! I have to now talk now about them. Now they're going to ask me about all the <laughs> right. people and places and experiences. So I was I was yeah. sure to with this record write and create stuff that I would be totally comfortable well, discussing. I thought you handled it like a champ. Thank and I you. remember I do have great great uh, fond memories of of our experience together. But I remember yeah I remember you leaving the studio and and looking around at uh, my my team at the time <laughs> thinking. God, I wish she. I wish she was having more fun. <laughs> I was having because, a lot of fun because it was such a good <laughs> record. And, Thank you. you. know, and and this record's even better. Thank you. This record's way better. Thank which you. is which is an accomplishment. And so I'm curious to know, um, when you obviously the, you you had the parameters that you wanted to refine in the way you were going to make it, the parameters you wanted to refine in the way that you promoted it, mm -hmm. and it seems like you've got that down. Mm -hmm. And you look very chill, very calm, good vibrations, <laughs> and all of that. But I want to, I want to know. To me, records, a good record denotes a period in the artist's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I feel like this is very, a very time specific record for you. It's a time specific record of a place in my life personally. Yeah. But I also wanted it to be something where I could then still listen to these songs in ten years, and whether it's myself or anyone listening to it, they could still connect with it like when you listen to an album like 19 by Adele you still listen to all those oh, songs sure. and it's it just still hits you just as much as it did then well I always say that a great song is a song that is is deeply intimate of an artist's exper experiences or emotions but leaves room for me to climb inside mm -hmm, exactly and and live inside the song so that I can relate to it and want to and want to have it in my life yeah and these songs feel that way very much so thank you yes i it, it does really you know this album is the last three years of my life so what did you want what did you want people to know about you i wanted to know people what i what i wanted people to know about me is that i'm a 30 year old girl uh who's just seen a lot been through a lot, but has sort of come out of the other side of a lot of amazing and some not so incredible experiences with a level of maturity and growth and strength. Um, there's a lot of love songs on this album. Mm. I've had the privilege of experiencing such great love in my life. And there's also this, um, what the mo thing I'm the most grateful for is also the hope of even more love. And um, I think that if you're anyone that's ever gone through something, you hope that you never sort of lose that spark and that hope and that that's still that like dream. And I haven't, and I'm really grateful for that. So there's a lot of love on this album. I think that there is a level of maturity and there is, you know, there's that dose of um, inspiration as, as well, those sort of like motivating songs, which I gravitate towards as a listener, but I also think that it's what people kind of also want to hear from me. So songs like Anything's Possible or Believer or even Proud, um, they they have like a, a dose of, of that. Mm. Again, that's Leah Michelle joining us on One on One. I'm Larry Flick. The album we're talking about is called Places. So how, if at all, differently do you approach singing your songs these days? Because your voice... In some in some places, sounds very familiar to me, mm -hmm. and in other places, I feel like you're 
working different parts of your instrument. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about how you're using your voice these days. Well, I think that, you know, when you've heard me sing a lot in Glee or even in the first record, um, you know, I worked with producers that had a specific sound in which they wanted me to sort of replicate. Right. And that, you know, with Glee, there was really sort of a formula to the songs that we were recording. And with this new record, I didn't have anyone telling me what to do. So I feel like these aspects of my voice have always been there, but people really haven't had the opportunity to hear them. But I do have a much lower register than I think people are familiar with. So I dipped into a lot of that in like in a song like Sentimental Memories. That has more of a like a phase Fade to You by Maisie Starr, if you're familiar with that song. Mm -hmm, of course. Um, it, it doesn't really need to go anywhere specifically vocally, but it still is very haunting. I sang a lot of songs like that in Spring Awakening that maybe weren't like the biggest belting songs, but still you connected with them and you, you know, you, you felt they hit you to your core still. Um, but then, you know, it was important for me to show off that larger side, that more theatrical. I personally picked songs and wrote songs that were difficult because I wanted them to be challenging and mm. I wanted them to be songs that maybe only a handful of other people could tackle. That was important to me. See, I, I like I like the fact that I feel as a listener, like I know you better as a, as a, as a person and as an artist because I feel like I'm experiencing your tone. Well, I had a hand in every single thing. But do you thing. know what I mean? Like because, yeah. It, you know, it takes a confident singer to know that she could blow the notes out hmm. and opt not to. Yeah, and, and I... Sometimes sometimes you don't have to sing to the, exactly. to the balcony. Sometimes you have to sing to the point where it feels like a thought. Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, that's courage because we live in this era where people are like, can you hit those notes? Mm -hmm. Hit them. They're money shots. And and so I feel, you know, when, when you kind of pull it back, when you're singing in your lower register... When I'm getting some of that, you know, occasional rasp, but you know, it's just that's humanity, mm -hmm. and and yeah. this is all over this record. It's really beautiful. Thank you. I mean, we did not do a hundred takes of each song. We were very um, minimal in the recording process. I wanted it to sound real, and I also wanted to make it so that these songs could be easily transferable to the stage. I'm launching a, a small tour right now, and I wanted the arrangements of the songs as well as the vocals. If I couldn't sing it in the studio a hundred times, then I'm not going to be able to do it on stage. Right. So I made sure to pick material. But, you know, it, it, I really hope that people find that true connection to me with this record because there is not a note on this album that I did not approve. I didn't have the opportunity to do that with my last record, especially on the production side. I was in the room of every single song that was produced on this album. And if there was a symbol that I did not like, <laughs> I made sure Heavy Love sure in particular. Record. Yeah, we did about 19 versions of Heavy Love until I was happy. And I had a hand in every single thing that happened with this Good record. Good for you. Thank you. So tell me something. When you have been through... Things that we all go through, but with the entire world watching. Yeah. Um, there comes a point where you you have to, I don't know if just share protection, you have to shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you're an artist, you have to find a way right. to reopen. Yeah. And I'm curious to know when you started to feel that courage again. You know, here's the thing that people... Um, <clears throat> You know, I have a lot to say about this because if you know me very well, I talk quite openly oh, I know. about everything that I've been through. I've read um, many, many things. I've seen you on TV talking about these things. Um, you choose your trusted uh, vessels very yeah. carefully, uh, as you should. Um, but I'm talking really more about the art and when you kind of, mm -hmm. to me, great art is exposure. Well, well, you know, when I wrote If You Say So on the first album with Sia, yeah. which was only a, a couple of maybe even weeks after, um, you know, because the album was done and then we added that song onto the record. And I loved that song. I would have probably talked about it more. But again, that was an example of something where I was so honest with that song and we were very specific with that song. Right. And then when it came time to talking about it, you know, for me, it wasn't so much that I wasn't ready to talk about it. But what people don't understand always is there are so many other people that were a part of this family and friends and I have to be respectful of that so it was a little too soon I feel for me to go out there and and be so open is it hard to be in your in your business 
now versus when you first started? Is it hard to be in this business now? Well, I think that the issue now is that there's so much more social media and and people. That's what I mean. It's like, good lord, let's, yeah. Can we all go to sleep? <laughs> but you know, it's it's. I do feel again, like I said earlier. I wanted to make sure that everything that I put on this record now that I was comfortable with talking about. Mm. And so I wrote Hey You, which is the last song on the record. I wrote with Stephen Rabel and Ali Temposi. And I sat down with them to write a breakup song and um, about someone who had terribly broken my heart. How dare he. And even though we had sentimental memories on the record, which is, you know, also a nice little moment for them. Um, I was, you know, I, I, I still <laughs> felt the need to write some more. And I, we sit down to write this breakup song and um, I had a journal of some, I don't really write songs as much as I write feelings and ideas, but I did sure. have this full song. It was called Hey You. And so we'd finished this breakup song. First we do the lyrics. First we drink the wine. Then we write the lyrics. <laughs> and then we go and we sit and then we go... <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and then we go, okay, let's get the music to then go with the lyrics. So R Steven sits down, Rabel, and I don't know if you don't know him, you should. I know Rabel, he's incredible. He's genius. Genius. And so all of a sudden, Rabel starts to play. Doo -doo 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 and I go, oh, that sounds like. It sounds like something falling from heaven. Yeah. I said, oh, that would be a really good background for this little song I wrote called Hey You. And next thing you know, within, I think, 30 minutes, we had the song completed. And I wanted to write a song about losing someone that wasn't necessarily some heartbreaking, terrible, sad song. Mm. I wanted to write a song that was beautiful, that was about if you had five minutes to see someone again that you lost, what would you say to them? Mm. And when I've stopped to think about it, Whereas you maybe think that you would say everything that you are upset about or everything that if you had questions, you probably wouldn't. You probably would just look at them and say, hi, how are you? Oh, my God. Like, it would probably not be that. Oh, you're so nice. Yeah. Leah, what? I'd be like, mm-hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> but... I'd be like, hey, you. Mm. <laughs> well, listen, if you'd like to write the sequel, <laughs> yours could be called, hey, you. Mm-hmm. I'll just do the drag version of hey, you. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But for me, I just I just felt like it would, it would be much more simple than that. And yeah. so yeah. I love this song. And it's so special to me. And I think everyone wants it to be some some dramatic story. It's just not. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes things just come to an end. Well, you know, I, for me, I'm I'm very proud of it. And you probably be. because I like you so much. And when you handle things with respect and, and class in an interview, people would be surprised how much more people are willing to open up as the publicist sits here and sweats. <laughs> 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 But, you know, it is something I'm proud of, and I probably won't talk about all the time, but, you know, I love the song that I wrote. It's a beautiful song. Thank and you. It's, it's handled really well, and, um, and, and it really is closer to reality than the average song about this topic is. Mm -hmm. So, Leah Michelle's here on uh, Entertainment Weekly Radio. You're, you're a lyric girl, aren't you? I am a lyric girl, but I'm also a melody girl. I go back and forth. But, but I you're not going to say... sing. My take on you is that you're not going to sing gobbledygook just because the melody's cute. No. But again, like, I think Love is Alive has few lyrics. It's a very simple song. Yeah. But, you know, you don't need a, a, a novella in order for the words to be powerful. Yeah, I definitely did. I think that this album is a good combination of both. Mm. But as as a listener, I mean, yeah, I kind of I kind of gravitate towards both. Mm. It's 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 when you get that combination just right. Well, that's the that's the fantasy, you know, right? Yeah. But I get the feeling though that when you're writing, you're just you're just you're just plowing through phrases and thoughts, and you'll see a word on a sign, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and you'll say. In my phone, text yeah. it in. Well, the way and that then I all of a sudden, and then you'll listen. You look for melodies. Yes. You look for homes for your words. Yeah, the way that I write is, um, I tell stories. So, mm. um, the 
the songs that you know I contributed to on the record came from writing sessions. So I would sit down with a small group of very talented writers, and I would just tell them stories like, "I want a song that you know where I talk about this, and because this happened, and, and this phrase, like tornado, for example, was me mm. sitting down and saying, "I need a song where we talk about because you know." The challenges in this industry, um, there are so many positive things, but there's also some negatives. And, you, you know, I got to a point where sometimes I would get so worried about people making up false news about me. You know, you wake up and pe- there's a story. She's fighting with this person. And meanwhile, I'm like, that's my best friend. How could people just even make stuff up? And I started to get really nervous. Like, the fact that, people could just make stuff up in the press was very stressful to me. And then I woke up one morning and I was like, who the cares? Say what you want to say. Isn't that the best feeling ever? Yeah. And then we wrote Tornado. I was like, I want a song that just says, you know what, whatever comes my way, just tell everybody I can do this. See, this is what I'm, this is what I mean when I was, what I meant earlier when I said, is it hard to do what you do? Because, um, because, you're an artist, mm-hmm. you know, and and to have to navigate through all the nonsense is, I don't know, just doesn't seem cool. To me. Well, I've done it, you know, I think that now I've sort of, uh, I live a very quiet life, nice house, and I, I, I now know how to sort of turn certain things mm. off. Good for you. Thank you. Well, Leah Michelle's album is called Places, and mm. you should check it out. But you should also go back and check out Louder, you know. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's, there, there's the song Cannonball on that record. Mm-hmm. It was very, very important to me because three and a half years ago, I had a heart attack mm-hmm. and I had open heart surgery. And even though music is the underscore of every moment in my life, that was the only time in my life where I couldn't listen to music. Mm-hmm. I just, for some reason, my mind wouldn't let me. Mm-hmm. And there were two songs I listened to and one of them was Cannonball. Oh, thanks. And the first time I got up and was able, because you have to, I don't know if you know, but when you have open heart surgery and they crack open your torso Mm -hmm. you have to learn how to walk again Mm -hmm. your whole core is destroyed oh my god it's really weird and it's really weird to they have to learn how to walk Well, they tell you that and you think that's ridiculous i'm a 50 i'm a 50 year old man i know how to walk but no my husband had to teach me Mm -hmm. how to walk again Mm -hmm. and that song every day for the first three months Hmm. that i went to the gym and got on the treadmill and just slowly walked i had that song on loop Wow. I played it over and over and over, and it it was my lifeline to recovery. It was my lifeline to recovery. It was my lifeline <laughs> to recovery, and when I'm having a bad day, as a person who lives with you know depression and fear and all that, mm-hmm. I still listen to that song. Thank you. So the power of music. It really is. It's really incredible, and this record has a lot of those moments. So thank congratulations. You. Thank you and so much. And I'm so much. grateful that I get to tell you that. Oh, thank so. you. It did just the same thing for me as well. When Sia played me that song, we were sitting down to write Hey You. And I don't know if I told you this story the last time, probably because, you know, it's just such a crazy time. Yeah. But we were sitting down to write Hey You and the album was complete. And she went to go into the bathroom and her um, laptop was open and her songs were just on loop and Cannonball came on. And by the time she walked out of the bathroom, I was in full tears. And I was like, I need this song. And I came home to my mother and my best friend Jonathan who were living with me at the time. And I turned to them and I was like, I'm going to be okay starting now. And I needed to learn to walk again. Yeah. And this song helped me. You sing it like your life's depending on it. Thank you. Leah Michelle, the album is called Places. We're going to listen to some music from that album right now here on EW Radio. <laughs> 